Hello and welcome to the Dash Convention Europe. I'm Mark Mason and I'm joined by my fellow co-host and amigo, Joel Venezuela. And we have the great pleasure of having Dash Core Group Chief Operating Officer Robert Vietzko. Yeah. Vietzko. He's practicing that all convention long. Yeah, so um, we're here. It's actually day two, right? right? And we've already had some great keynotes today. Um, what, what's, what's the coolest thing you've seen so far? The coolest thing, the community first. Yes. The first coolest thing I, I have like experienced here, not only seen, but by experience, like, extremely friendly people, a lot of people who came here on, on their own time to spend the time in this really expensive country. And friendliness I, I experienced from, from them. It's like, you know, I, I came here, and I feel like I I was among friends who I know for years. Of course, I know them for years, but so far I saw their nicknames or sometimes weird, the, their it? faces on, on yeah. screen, but I have never uh, seen them before in person. So extremely excited. I'm extremely excited about the community. If it comes to things, I think that the vending machine and coffee machine that is, you know, mm. proving how Dash works, how excellent it is. It, yeah. It's great to see this in action, finally implemented, and and I hope it will be you know spread around, uh, and simply working solution on, in in real life. Yeah, I'm I'm super pumped because the previous keynote was actually just Dana and Ivan from Dashcore Group, and they yeah. just done the uh, Dash Platform keynote. I mean, Joel was sitting Fantastic. at the back, and we, yeah, we were sort of muttering to each other like, "Oh, this is really cool," and. Uh, Joel, you just picked up on a, a side chain that you were just telling me about that you yes. ever heard. That and sounded really cool. Yes, I'm sure I won't even try to explain it to, do, to butcher it because I also don't fully understand it yet. It will come in time. But from discussions last night and then looking at the actual presentation, it sounds like this thing that's known as Dash Evolution for years, Dash Platform, is such a complicated, in a beautiful way kind of a thing. It seems like it's there's so much work and innovation that's gone into something that's extremely elegant and it seems like in a world where Dash has become the best internet money or in-person money in the world where people just the hype hasn't caught up to that because everyone remembers Bitcoin already did it kind of well even though it doesn't work like that anymore I think people are going to get really excited when they see this oh, yeah. like people who don't care about Dash today are going to see this and oh you mean can I get it in my can I run my thing on this and there's going to be a lot of uh Cross currency, cross cryptocurrency uh, collaboration. I could foresee in the future. A lot of people are going to want to run their, say, Ethereum stuff on um, Dash platform. So it's going to be. It seems like there's a lot of innovation that went into this, and I, it's so quiet. I wouldn't say secret because there's presentations on it, but it's so, it's so underground right now that. It's going to be. It's going to blow a lot of people's minds when you that's, just get a lot of developers yeah, out there. That's true, and there is a reason. There is a reason why it's underground because mm -hmm. you know if you compare what we were presenting two years ago as an evolution concept to to what we are having, this it grew dramatically. The complexity of the solution we are developing nowadays it's much much bigger and greater than what the evolution concept was in in 2017, for example. Yes. So. The, the, the massive change happened. These guys are, are doing fantastic job. What what they they have re-engineered the, during the, the last year simply blows my mind. It's yes, and it, I think it, it reminds me of uh, one of the major uh, Mexican beer distributors because oh, they always wanted to they just wanted to make and sell beer, but then they were having issues trying to find a bottling company, so they made their own. And then they were having the issues trying to distribute it, and so then they they made their own chain. It's one of the most popular convenience stores in the whole country just to do it. And it's like now it's like, oh, we do beer, okay, well, but look at like we have a massive infrastructure built up just to make that possible. Yeah. So people just wanted, I just wanted to not pay X X Y seven zero. I just wanted to pay at State Ashy. That's all we wanted in 2015. I want you to pay me. Yes, we, that will happen. Don't worry, Don't worry I'll let you back. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's all I wanted to be able to do is just, but now in order to make that happen, it's just, it's like you have to build a whole, like, like I just want to visit Switzerland, but now it's like, 
someone had to invent the jet engine, someone had to create a whole yep. infrastructure, build an airport, all this stuff just so we could go visit. So the end process is just like, I want to come here. I want to visit Zurich. It's a great, it's a great town, you know? Yeah. But then we see what had to be built to make that happen. That's just like yeah, huge mind blow. Yeah, the, there was a vision at the very beginning. Then Andy, uh, together mm-hmm. with Evan, they, they have created an architecture. Mm-hmm. Then the, the, the entire team started to work on the design. Right now they are hammering down the details of the design and development process is, is being done in parallel. And it was like a massive effort. You know, because it started from one person, Evan thinking about this and then <laughs> like hammering down the high level concept, right? And it was amazing to ever for everyone. But you know, people did not realize how huge, massive effort is required to actually de- deliver this solution, to develop yes. and deliver this solution. And I can tell you still we are uh, you know like discovering the new territories during the development process. It's not mm-hmm. like everything is crystal, crystal clear and our guys are sitting and, you know, just developing because everything is obvious. Absolutely not. It's it's like the, the process of discovering how does blockchain and, and master nodes can cooperate and uh, can produce the outcome desired by, by the evolution concept, mm-hmm. right? And of course we are experiencing hard times. Sometimes it's, you know, it's going smooth, but sometimes, you know, they are hitting the wall and they, they need to re-engineer something. So uh, portions of code has yes. to be rewritten and it, it, you know, it requires time. That's why it's, it's so long. It reminds me of um, what people say about uh, Steve Jobs' vision with Apple, that it's like, it seems like the, what, all of smartphone technology and tablet technology, all that stuff seems very simple and intuitive, but it took like, first off, a high level minded genius to just say, what if we just make it like this and this? And what if people interact with stuff? They invented a new concept. People like your phone is just the thing you voice call yeah. people on. They invented a new concept of like an interactive device. Very high level. Now it's like, all right, get on that. And then everyone's just like, how do we make this happen? How do we, oh, I don't know. And then all the hard developing work goes into that. All like the crack in the whip, you know, keep the yeah. developers down in the basement, just like keep, <laughs> keep working, keep working. No, no food for you until you finish more lines of code, all that kind of stuff. And I don't know, here we are, before you know it, Dash Platform. Yeah, there's a lot of information in that Dash Platform keynote, so I'm gonna have to revisit it. But, um, Robert, I want to ask you from the Dash Core group perspective, because there's been meetups, but this is kind of technically the first community event. So, how does Dash Core group? feel about that because beforehand you know we've always done proposals or we've worked with someone else to do big events but this is really the first community event so how do, how do you feel about it? Uh, personally I'm amazed uh, I'm, I'm totally happy and, and really amazed by the you know efforts done in order to, to make it happening and, and I'm amazed about quality of this event and uh, I don't know how the others, uh, I did not chat about the, the event yet with you know Fernando and the, the, the other guys from DCG but personally for me it's, it's a kind of proof that community this is the greatest community in crypto space and you know it, it's not the development team only that is required to to push the adoption to to organize you know everything in the in the project there is a place for development team we should be focused on on the protocol development and community t- t- can take over the the other efforts because you are doing it you know fantastic yeah i have to give props to Fabio, Martin and Jan because it's been like a fully rounded experience because yesterday you know we went for, for lunch was it a lot of Mongolian kind mm-hmm. of a grill thing and obviously uh, that, that was paid for but like even later in the evening we went to the porterhouse and they were accepting Dash and the, the pub was just full of people and they were paying with Dash via the Salamantex POS device yeah, yeah. that was really magical for me just seeing oh, everyone yeah. there having beers paying with Dash you, you posted a video on Twitter yes. right? That was pretty cool. Yeah, got a I lot could. of traction. It's, uh, I mean, and paying with Dash is not something that's so weird for me because I live in New Hampshire and it happens, but it is weird for me outside of New Hampshire. And especially when you can get like more than just a couple of curiosity people. It's like the, the fact that, like I thought I lived in a little pocket of nothing and maybe I do, but just going out and seeing like, oh, someone else has brought the New Hampshire experience to Switzerland yeah. now. 
and now you have dozens of people, like you know, scores of people showing up and just all paying, and then they have a, a polished system there, and you know, you just pay with the old QR code and it spits out the little receipt, and it's it's fantastic to just it see is. tons of people, and I mean, we talk about say like transaction volumes and stuff, like fifty people in a day, or I mean, I'm sure it was more than that even. That's a lot of people. Yeah. And usually when you have a, a business taking dash, it's like a, a retail business, maybe they, they don't, they usually don't get a transaction every day. It depends on yeah. the area. It oh. might, might be like not even like once a month if you can like make sure they keep them engaged and they fall off. But then, you know, the porterhouses had like an army of people yeah. paying in dash. Yeah. It was so great experience. I, I paid three times. I, I wanted to, you know, have separated <laughs> beers, paid three times because I enjoyed yes. it so much. And you know, it's a it's a great experience. Maybe it, it was the, the, the greatest thing oh. do, during the day actually, you know. <laughs> seeing it that food, it works. Drink, yeah. Everything and seeing everyone uh, come together. It, you know, I use Dash for to, to pay for hotels, flights. To, to pay the, the IT services I, I'm ordering, but it was actually the first time I had I had a chance to pay with, with Dash in, in Ukraine, but unfortunately their hardware was down at that time, and it was the first time I was paying for my food, and I was happy like a child. Oh my <laughs> yes. God. And that's why I, I described uh, during the Living on Dash panel yesterday was the it makes you ha it makes you happy to pay. Yeah. Every time I I mean I've been living without you know not on fiat currency for years, and back then all my memories of using bank cards and things were all like there's some stress associated with it of like oh I gotta enter this I don't want to do it and I would just choose not to pay for things sometimes I mean I don't mean stealing them but like <laughs> sometimes I'd be like oh you have to enter your card now I'm like ah, I don't know. But it just feels so freeing to spend Dash on something. Oh, you just go beep, and it's it's fun, it's happy, and I want to send Dash to everyone. I've sent you know thousands of dollars of my own money over the last several years, like giving people Dash. Like here, you want some here, take some here. You want some, take some. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine just like a, having a fistful of like Swiss francs, going, oh hey, I just met you. You want some here? <laughs> like no, no one does that. No one's happy to spend this. No yeah. one. But with with Dash, it's just so. It works so well. It's so like freeing. You don't have to worry about like making change or any of that kind of headache. You don't have to worry about, oh, okay, this is a serious financial transaction now, and then <laughs> the state has to look in or we'll just you know make sure it's like. Ugh. And I actually like a, a friend of mine. Um, I sent him some dash for something, and he, I accidentally like because I was too distracted with everything, like overpaid him by like five times. And then he's like, hey, mate, I think you overpaid. Oh, and he just sent it back to me. And then it, there was no stress of like, if you ever pay like a fiat bill of any kind and you give too much money or something, there's this, oh, like I, I messed up. I my, I ruined something. There's this feeling. But this is just, hey, you get to send it back and forth now a few times. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And that, that peace and freedom that comes with that is something that I think that every single person who bought a beer with Dash last night or the night before or tonight is going to remember that experience. They're going to be transformed by that. Wow, this was cool. And they're going to be a hardcore Dash person from that moment on. Absolutely. So there'll be members of the Dash community that were unable to attend this event. How beneficial is it to actually have face-to-face -face communication with people from the community? Because it's very different to someone in Discord and then seeing them in person because as you were saying earlier, you know, they've got avatars and aliases and we, we've been speaking to people online for years, but in person, is it beneficial? Is it, has it been worth it? Have you learned anything new? Have you? <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been really yes. re rewarding and uh, satisfying yeah. experience. It, um, you know, I've yeah. learned it's this our guy. first meeting, right? Well, uh, we were in London. In London, but, yeah, but we've brief. met in London, yeah. but I, I, I yes. have never met George. I, 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 never knew how, I never knew how nice and stylish he was. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. But we've had some time to have some, you know, you know beers it's always my head on the yes. screen, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like everything is coming together. Like yeah. there's real unity, and I do feel like we're moving into this like next chapter and phase. And um, you know, when you did your keynote, someone asked about you know Coinbase. How does this change things? Yeah. And I think that's that's an important topic because. Um, you know, you mentioned from uh, the regulation perspective, but how do you feel 
Dash is doing right now. Are you happy where Dash is currently at? I'm totally happy with uh, where we are, with the development, with the progress we have made, teams, community we are having. I'm not happy with the price, in particular with the fact that the price of Dash is still attached to, like, packed to Bitcoin. I'm, you know, praying for the moment when it will, you know, it will split and uh, there will be no connection to Bitcoin because actually any any move on on Bitcoin destroys actually the the other cryptocurrencies not not only Dash but you know this entire focus on trading and speculation actually can kill many interesting projects and uh, well to to uh, to get put to get back to the question yeah I'm I'm totally happy with where Dash is because at the end of the day three years ago four years ago we were you know very small team the the project with couple of people working on it nice community and right now we are recognizable brand in the crypto industry we grew a lot we are having like professional partners being here or and being a part of, of our ecosystem and you know it's growing it's the machine that it's almost unstoppable the the only thing that is negatively affecting this machine is is the price the, the speculation on the on the exchanges and it has nothing to do with what we are doing right mm. with some if the bitcoin is going down we had outstanding announcements like chain logs that that are preventing 51 percent attack instant spendable chain transactions this is a re revolution for crypto industry actually right and the, the, there was no, absolutely no reaction because Bitcoin was falling down. It yes. was, it and was that's a, a kind of depressing. That's a funny thing to see because recently, this recent dip, like right before the, not Dash Improvement proposal, but this recent dip in yeah, the price yeah. uh, has, it's hard to know the exact catalyst for it, but two things were the back futures for Bitcoin not being as popular as the previously thought. And around the same time, Bitcoin's hash rate dropped 40% overnight. Yeah. And it was dumping. And then when you think about, like, then Dash suffers as a result, which is fu very funny. Because you think about Dash has not been speculation-based like that, trying to be used as real money. Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency futures not being uh, that popular has no bearing on Dash yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. And also, like, the 40% hash rate makes Bitcoin less secure which would make its rivals more secure in relation to it, particularly because if Dash experienced a 40% hash rate drop, first off, because of the dark not, gravity wave, nothing, nothing the blocks really keep happens. coming out as normal as possible, and then if someone tries to attack the network, haha, got chain locks, can't do that. Yeah. And it, that, should make the, that should make the Dash price rise relative to Bitcoin going down. Yeah. But we're not, we're not out of the woods yet. We still have some time for it's, the market to mature and actually start pricing in these things yeah, and recognizing them. Th there is no logic in the, the crypto market, you can yes, say, right? Because, of course. you know, th there was no logic for, for the price mm -hmm. drop, price dip in, in Dash, because just Bitcoin. Of course. Yeah. Interesting. So, why we have this opportunity with you, I've got to ask you about the operating side. Okay. Because I feel, in some ways, you've helped professionalize the way that Dash Core Group functions because you brought that project management experience. Yes. Um, of, you know, development right now, we're working to deadlines and developers got their backs up against the wall. But what's the sentiment like in Dash Core Group? Because I like, are you are you excited right now? Like, what was are people are people feeling motivated? Yes, people are motivated, but also. You know, our teams are, are tired. Since months we are working so hard, you know, to, to deliver to you know, as as we promised till the end of the year to, to release on the test net. The excitement remains the same, right? There were ups and downs, mainly because of the price action. It it affects everyone, right? But uh, the enthusiasm to deliver evolution, the you know, the dedication of, of our teams remains the same. And uh, if it comes to operationalized operational side, yeah, we, we've changed a lot. When when I joined the team, it was 2015. There was no like common approach. There were like I I, I don't remember. It was five or seven of us basically doing everything. 
everyone was doing everything. Evan, Evan was coding to, together with Eugene and, and the rest of us. We yes. were doing everything. That was, that was funny when I would check the, the Dashcore team page. I just want to know who's working there. I saw these people and I'm like, all right, that guy does this, this guy does that. And there's a few people who I just could not figure out what they did. I'm like, Fernando is multi-tool. What is multi-tool? <laughs> yeah. like, what is that we, thing? We were multi-tools. Like, I thought it was like, does he have like this like weird like arm that comes out like a screwdriver and a knife and a like, toothbrush? Or does he has the multi-tool? Like, what, what does he even do? But I guess that's like shorthand for we're a small organization. Everyone has to do everything. Yeah. And we, we grew during the time, so we like split responsibilities because of my experience in, in management, project management, delivery management. I, I started to be focused more on the operational side of the company itself, no, not the project. For, for the project, I, I was dedicated as a, a project manager, but also I, I tried to make the life of our developers and other people easier by providing tools, Testing tools, providing tools. We we have migrated to, to to Slack, to Confluence and Jira in order to to manage work and you know to to keep information in one place. Then we have started uh, to to use Gmail as a, as a centralized solution, but uh, at the same time it, it gives an opportunity for for the teams to share an information via Google Docs and uh, you know use the same tool and we were gradually introducing some some processes in to, to improve the work for example before that there was no like common framework of work and we rea we have realized that we are very ineffective in in our efforts in fact because you know many people were doing the same mm. and then they have started to talk to to each other and realizing, oh, I, I was working on this as well. Oh, so we, we have wasted a, a lot of time. So we have introduced Scrum approach. So so our people uh, do work in, in Scrum teams and then use Jira to, to store uh, the user stories basically in backlogs. So everything is being more coordinated in, and, and integrated in order to achieve better results, quicker. And I think it's visible. The the, the progress oh, in 2015 or, or 16 was much slower. The pace was much slower. Now in 2018, 2019, we are releasing like very quickly. Oh, yeah, the release is like yeah, yeah. So and yeah. the 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 last year we we've been introducing the the Scrum methodology in in Dashcore Group, and I find it very effective. And it's not only for the development team. Development team. Uh, teams are, are having their own backlogs and they, they do work in, in Scrum mode, but also, you know, the, the other functional teams or, or management team, we do have also our backlogs and we, we have meetings where we are discussing what has been done, what we are going to do, what are the obstacles and so on and so forth. And it works. It works great. I think one of the interesting things about actually all of our involvement, but it's the co-working and collaboration because now we've got other dash funded organizations doing a lot of the business development work right now yeah. and i know we're all part of meetings as well behind the scenes and this is what the community doesn't get to see but i think it's important to talk about that yes. in terms of uh, you know marketing business development we've got a much more collaborative experience and i think it's really beneficial and um you know we've always spoken stuff in the past but i think we're getting a lot more organized now and we're starting yeah. I, oh, feel, we, I feel like we've turned a corner and we've really we've got the momentum now. Yeah. Yes, I mean, this has been a very short period of time as well. It's like very recent where, I mean, Dashcore Group got, got its collective, you know what, together sooner than I would say the community projects. And before it was just like when, when Mark and I joined on board, there was like Dashcore Group doing stuff and then random community projects that just are there for a month or two and are gone. Kind of like not a lot of stuff. And then... Oh, when we were you know, doing Dash Force, and it just has persisted over like the, coming up on three years old now. It's like the one other one, but it was just then okay. Then there's two of them. Three years old okay. already. Yes, wow. almost three years. <laughs> and then we're coming up on, and then there were some other groups. So uh, say like the Dash Embassy. Uh, yeah. Then they like they just stuck around. They're still here. And then there's others that stuck around. But then recently it was okay. We need to work together. And then we started doing these co-working calls like it was supposed like a media PR call but then it just turned out to we all work together calls where you had the representatives of all the various different dash groups 
all together and then start talking about, well, we need a, more exchanges. Oh, these are the ones that don't take that here. These are in your geographical region. Can you try to find talk to them? These are yours. And people just collaborate. And then over the last, you know, over the course of this year, basically, I've just seen like the, it's like all the fruits of that labor, all the yeah. results just yeah. after one after another, after another, after another, after another. And we'd be really excited about, oh, we're on one point of sale provider. And now there's like several here just today, not to mention all the previous ones that got on board and just I, the work is just coming out. And then one thing I think we can see from the convention here is how many people, how many partners are here that just are very recent in terms of like I was wondering because you know Dash was always the black sheep of the crypto community where people yeah whatever but I was part of me was worried about okay well how, who, how many like businesses and other people is it just going to be like the Dash like the Dash bag holders <laughs> it's like the Dash investors just come and hang out at the convention we're great aren't we or but like no now there's a ton of outside companies that just come in and are excited and everything and that was I mean, mostly the Dash Embassy. And those are professionals. Yes. That they know what they are talking about. They know what they do. It's not like a startup. Yes. And that they are trying, you know, to, to find yeah. find a way on how to survive on the market. Yes, Dash brought all the big fish in. Yeah, yeah. Right, guys. Well, I think we need to get back out there because we need to make the most of this opportunity and talk to more people. So there's going to be a lot more interviews and content coming up. So make sure you keep it locked. And uh, thanks, guys, for the chat. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks. Excellent. And stay dashy.